It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's Boy Millsy. Back with Hometown Commander. We're creating another episode of Millsy Brews. The show where I brew my version 1.0 decklist of the commander in front of us and my quest to brew the magic world. As always, the decklist is going to be down in the description for you below. As always, I'd appreciate it if you could interact with the video, like, comment, subscribe, touch any of the links down in the description. I would really appreciate it. But today we're jamming on through ACR. Talk about a, um, a commander that... A style that I didn't expect, but I think is really cool, and that's Sigurd Jarl of Ravensthorpe. A Naya 3-3 human warrior with Vigilance, Trample, and Lifelink that says for both, so when it's attacking, you can pay one to put a lore counter on target Saga you control or remove one from it. And whenever you put a lore counter on a Saga you control, put a plus one plus one counter up to one other target creature. I think this is a really interesting de design face for a commander. It cares about Sagas. But instead of caring about the sagas coming in or the sagas leaving, we care about something that we're going to do multiple times a turn and in, in, in it, even without its ability, which is put lore counters on sagas, right? It happens automatically at the start of main. But Skirt can also do it itself or take one off. The fun part here is we can either continue to add on to or manipulate by taking off um, lore counters from our sagas. But what I like about the plus one plus one counters is this is a this is something that, uh, of course, Naya colors have no... Um, no lack of experience with, and we have lots of things to choose from. So we're kind of marrying this Saga deck with this Plus One Plus One Counters deck, and I think it's kind of fun. We're gonna talk about ways we're gonna play some of that classic enchanter type stuff. We're gonna talk about some of the Sagas and some of the fun things we get to play. And we'll talk about how we're gonna pay off those counters. So as far as Enchantress goes, I mean, this is the kind of stuff you're gonna see probably in any Enchantress deck, most of it, no matter what you see. I don't want to Blossoms or Suggestion Champion are Enchantress staples. I don't want to blossoms. It's going to draw a card whenever, whenever it or another enchantment ETB is under your control. And uh, Stetson Champion is going to get a plus one plus one counter and draw you a card whenever an enchantment ETB is under your control. So, again, killer abilities. And this is helpful, especially and for being ETB and not cast in case we're getting them back from the graveyard somehow or doing things like that. Under Spirit Dancer is kind of a fun one here. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you can create a token of the copy of it. Do this only once each turn. This can copy our sagas copy our support enchantments this is kind of interesting and it's ability that i think is worth the five mana as long as you can get it down and get it set up sithis and enchantress presence again more card draw presence whenever you cast sithis whenever you cast so we, we get a good mix of some on cast some on etb and then boon of the spirit realm seems something that's going to be great for the deck Whenever it or another enchantment comes into your control, you put a counter on it, and creatures get plus one, plus one for each counter on it. So a way to make the board big, make it hard for our opponents to deal with, and work our way forward. As far as sagas go, I mean, there's plenty in the deck to choose from. We have a lot of them that make tokens and do different things. And so what we're trying to do is just get a good um, average range of these, that all that have different effects, and you know, trying to make sure we see what we can see and have fun with what we can pull. Um, first up, Elspeth uh, conquers death. On the first um, on the first step, we're going to exile a permanent opponent controls with, with mana value 3 or greater. On the second one, it uh, increases the cost of our opponent's spells by 2 or more, by 2 more until our next turn. And the third one, we get to bring a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard back to the battlefield um, with, a, with a plus one, plus one counter or a loyalty counter. Again, great to recur a creature if one's already dead you know do, do some good things for that historian's boon is a card that feels great here when we hit or another non-token enchantment etbs we make a soldier and then whenever the final ability of a saga goes off we make a 4-4 angel this ability works really well with some of our sagas that actually flip when they get to level three because it's still going to go off and still make us an angel oath of oral may just make some tokens on version one and two and then on that third chapter, it puts an indestructible counter up to one human, and we become the monarch. Again, Sigurd um, is a human, so we can protect him with an indestructible counter that way. Origin and the Hidden Ones, four damage on the first ring, two assassins on the second one, and the third one gives assassins that when they attack this turn, we get an assassin token with menace that's tapped and attacking as well. So a cool ability. Shot on the Skull is probably one of my favorite sagas in these colors. On the first ring, you exile the top four cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you could play those cards. And then on rungs two and three, whenever you cast a spell, you just put a counter on a creature control. This works great with all this other counter support we're going to talk about in a second because it means that every spell we're casting is adding those counters. The first of Rowan Gains makes us a token, put some counters on a creature, 
draws two cards of your creature par four greater, and then makes a gold, which is very similar to a treasure. So, I mean, just a lot of value there as far as that one goes. The Huntsman Redemption, we make a beast token, and we could sack a creature if we do. We search our library for a creature or basic land and put it into our hand, which is a great ability. And then the third rung, up to two dark creatures, get plus two, plus two, and trample again. We'll work very well with all these plus one, plus one counters we're spreading around. Princess takes flight, exile to one target creature. Uh, target creature, we get control gets plus two, plus two, and flying, and then return the exiled card of the battlefield under its owner's control. Uh, we could have this be our own creature. We could have this be a, something, a blocker we want to get out of the way, or someone's commander, whatever it could be. Um, I just like that giving something flying is going to pair really well with us and making our creatures bigger. Uh, the Weather Seed Treaty, search your library for a basic land, put in the battlefield tab. We make a sapperling. And then target to control gets plus X, plus X, and trample the turn where X is the number of basic land types among lands. Again, the max is going to be three, right, because we're in Naya. But this is still a really important ability, and I like that it ramps us, and then the domain can put trample on it, maybe a creature that already has a few plus one, plus one counters on it. Three blind mice just going to make us a bunch of tokens, and then when the fourth goes off, gives everything plus one, plus one, and vigilance, ton of turn. Vault 75, a good uh, example of a board wipe here, exile all creatures power four or greater. And then two and three puts a counter on each creature we control. So if we can start off with creatures low enough or manipulate them, Vault 75 can get pretty big. And um, this wouldn't be a bad one, right, to keep with uh, on on that second level if possible with Sigurd, right, and make sure that um, we're always getting more and more plus and plus one counters. War of the Last Alliance, such a library for a legendary creature, reveal it, put it into our hand, and then on the third one, creatures we control gain double strike till in a turn in the ring tempts us. So... Not a bad one there. Go get something pretty darn good and then double strike for a big attacky swing. But Okay, so Gerd's going to be putting a bunch of plus one, plus one downers down. So the question is, what what can we use them with? Well, we have things like Abs and Falconer that says each creature we control the plus one, plus one counter has flying. Put some evasion on our creatures and make them harder for our opponents to block if they're not built for that. Dusk Legion Duelist will draw us a card every turn whenever one or more plus one, plus one counters are put on it for the first time each turn. Well, that's great. Now we have some card draw baked in to us, you know, using Sigurd's ability. Probably one of my favorite recurring ones is Evolution Witness. Whenever one or more counters are put on it, you can return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. This means that we can take sagas that have already gone off into our graveyard and put them back so we can reuse them again, which feels really important as we're using some of those really important ones. Schlein Halar says whenever one or more plus one, plus one counters are put on a creature, it deals that much damage to target opponent. Um, this is a, a very easy way to just dole damage out to our opponents as we're putting these um, counters on our creatures. Thundering Raiju seems really interesting here. This is a card that doesn't see a lot of play, but if this feels like the deck for it, whenever it attacks, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then it deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of modified creatures you control other than Thundering Raiju. Remember, every creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it is going to be modified. Meaning Raiju should be able to throw out some good damage. And then Tuskard Captain, uh, every creature with a counter on it has Trample. So again, just a way to hit harder, hit our opponents as we're working our way through. But I've said it before on the show, and I'll say it again. No deck's perfect. This is my version 1.0 brew of the deck. I think I'm down the right lane, but I think we'd be able to learn a lot in testing. But we have to pick 100 cards. Sometimes there's cards that don't make it. And these are the three cards that were the closest to making it back in the list. And I think all three of them are shoo-ins for the list. I think it's just going to come down to finding those right ratios in our deck list. Yenna seems like an absolute slam dunk. Two mana to pick an enchantment and make a copy of it. Except it's not legendary if it's legendary. And then if the token is an aura, you get to untap and scry two. But the important part here is you could make a copy of a saga and have multiple of that one running at the same time. Uh, the fun combo for this is three blind mice, where you could just effectively keep making copies of three blind mice with three blind mice. It's a really fun one, and I think Yana's probably my first pick to come back in because I think it's such a good effect. All will be one is a is another shot of that um, Schlein Halar effect, where we can be putting. Um, damage to our opponents. The only difference here is Obi-Wan will actually hit for all this, the 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 the, uh, the sagas when they're getting counters. That way it would deal damage as well. Um, my only thing was, is I again, I ran out of slots. I ran out of places. I think I spread myself slightly too thin, but I think it comes back in as well. Same thing with Ancestral Mass. Just a way to make a creature huge. The amount of enchantments we have on the battlefield feels really good and feels really important. But let's get into our playtest. Let's see what Sigurd can do and let's have 
some fun. Keeping a four lander with a six, which can help us get things back by pitching lands. Triumph of Gerard and Fall of Gilgalad. So let's see what we can do here. Turn one, I guess we'll put that district in. That'll let us surveil one. Oath of Earl, I like that one. We'll keep that one on top. Turn two, we'll get that planes down. I mean, we could obviously get something like Tram for Gerard down, but obviously there's nothing to put those counters on. Again, we could put Fall of Yogalad down, but again, next turn we're gonna waste those counters. Because remember, it goes off automatically at the start of the main. So it's not like we could cast things beforehand. So I think we're just gonna kind of chill here on turn uh, two and not do anything too, too crazy. Turn three here, I really want to get um, Sigurd down if possible. And this is one of those just odd ones where in order to get Sigurd down, I'm gonna have to end up um, potentially having to pitch a card. It may actually be worth playing six here this turn and then playing Sigurd next turn. So Rith Grove says when ETBs you have to sacrifice it unless you return a non-land a non-layer land to your hand. So we would just tap this planes for white before we bounce it. Bounce it back to our hand, and like I said, we'll just get six down this turn so that we don't have to pitch to hand size. And okay, now six can um, help us get things back once our uh, once our um, sagas run out. But here we'll, we'll get uh, Sigurd down. Again, Vigilance Trample, Lifelink, a great ability. And now we can start putting those plus one, plus one counters around next turn. Gavany Township, I love the idea of trying to get more than one uh, down this turn. So we could potentially, um, so let's see, we get the Triumph of Gerard down first. We um, put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature you control the greatest power, which is Sigurd. And then when it the lore counter gets put on it, we'll put it on six. And then we'll get Fall of Gilgalad Gil down, uh, Scry two. We see Besaju and Path of Ancestry. Um, I like both of them. I think I'm fine with uh, we'll put the path on top just for the extra land, but that's going to give us another counter opportunity. We'll put a counter on Sigurd. Since it does have Trample and Lifelink, we can make it pretty darn big. Um, and then we'll just take a swing here with Sigurd. I mean, a, it's a 5 5 right now, Trample and Lifelink. I'm sure we're going to gain a couple life off of it. Turn 6, we'll get that Ancestry down and tapped. Um, sorry, we have to do these first. So Gerard will put another counter on the creature of the greatest power, which is Sigurd. And I still like the idea of getting him the counter of when it goes on on six. And then Gilgalad, two, uh, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. We'll put those on Sigurd. And then for when the one goes on, we'll put it on six. Now we'll get that one down. Uh, City of Death could be fun. Triumph of Anax could be fun to get um, that i like the idea of ian chesterton which can give each saga replicate making meaning we can get potentially multiple of them that could be fun i mean it's of our choice if our opponent has something oh sorry i, I apologize triumph annex doesn't steal that's right it just buffs the creature so i would probably just do this get the counter put the counter from when the counter goes on it on sigurd um but i would give trample to six we would attack with bull, six on mill, that Besaju, a forest, and rampant growth. And remember, we can cast non-land permanents out of our graveyard with retrace by pitching a land. Again, more damage from Sigurd here going in. Um, we always could have used the boast if we wanted to take, uh, m you know, maybe Gerard or take one off Gerard or take one off Fall of Gilgalad. I'm trying to think. Um, that's going to go off next turn, giving Sigurd a big ability. Let's take one off this one, right? Let's just say we take one, we pay the one from the township, take one off, you know, Fall of Yokelot. We'll start the next turn, move to our main phase, and then Triumph of Gerard will go off. We'll give Sigurd um, Flying First Strike and Lifelink to end a turn, uh, putting the counter on Sigurd, I guess, for that one. Fall of Yokelot, we'll put the two counters on six, just to give it some... Staying power, and then we will pick the, uh, the the counter from the counter going on Anax. We'll go here, but we'll give the trample to six again. Six attacks again, milling three. And the cool part is, again, remember, we can get these things back. Sigurd, I mean, dome somebody here for some big damage on this turn. 
and we still have yet to cast anything. Like we could have cast something like ECD or Oath of Earl before combat if we wanted to. Um, I think I'd probably just get the Spirit Dancer in so that way as we start playing more of these, we can get doubles of them, right? We'll go to the next turn. Fall of uh, Gilgalad goes off until end of turn target you go gains. When this dies, draw two cards, and then that creature fights up the one target creature you don't control. Obviously, we pick Sigurd and have it fight something that our opponents control and just gain a bunch of life, right? Triumph of Anax goes off again. I will give it to six so that it can get buffed up, right? Pretty good. We're sitting at five mana. I mean, the cool part about Andu here is we play, we play Elspeth, right? It conquers death, and we just get two of them, which is pretty darn cool, right? Um, um, you know, ma uh, exile two things in mana value three or less. We'll put the f the, the counter from uh, Anax on Sigurd, and then the two counters from ECD on Sigurd. So now we're threatening, you know, potentially getting towards commander damage on somebody, getting somebody that somebody has to deal with. Um and again, I think we're, we're set up pretty good here. There's a pretty good scenario for us there, and I think you can kind of see where we're driving at there. But let's do one more. Keeping a three-lander with Eidolon of Blossoms, all that glitters, Michi, or the Restoration of a Ganjo, which can get us a Plains. And a Chishiro, which can put counters on modified creatures. So again, great way to continue to get more and more counters on our creatures. Turn one, get that Fortified Village in tap, since we can't... Put in untapped anyway. Turn two. I mean, the Michi Coast is there, but or sorry, the, sorry, the, all that glitters is there, but there's no good target for it. So I think I'm okay just to wait here. Turn three, we get the sw uh, the the mountain down. We can get Sigurd down, but I mean, other than it just being a great three three attacker, I don't really see much value for it. I kind of like. Well, I guess we could do it and then do the restoration next turn, right? Do the restoration next turn and just get some value from it. Ouch, yeah. So now we'd want to do the restoration now that we missed another land. Um, search your library for a, bla a basic planes and put it in our hand. And now we can go ahead and play that for turn, just to keep ourselves at hand size. Brutal there, the missed that land, but it kind of is what it is. The good part now is that... Um, we're going the right direction. Turn five, we see a land, but uh, another restoration uh, counter. So we'll, another scanner card. It says you may discard a card when you do a return target permanent card with mana value two or less from your graveyard or the battlefield. So my thought here is all that glitters. Return it back. Attach to Sigurd, right? So now we got good value there. Uh, Jetmir's Garden in tapped there. I like the idea of Chishiro. I also like the idea of um, getting some like Fable or City of Death down. <sighs> I'd probably just do Chishiro, I guess. We missed the counter there, you know, so we won't get a counter on Chishiro this turn, but that's okay. Sigurd takes a, a good swing here. It's a plus two, plus two right now with all the enchantments we have. And it takes a big attack, gains us some life. On our end step, we would put a counter on Sigurd since it's modified. Go to our next turn. Iganjo is going to go off. It does get a counter, though. So um, that's okay. We're still going to get the ability. And I think we put it on Chishiro here, right? It says... And then so Restoration on the backside now has... You know, it's a saga that turns into a creature, which we'll happily take. Cabal, uh, Cavalry Courtyard comes in. We'll happily go do it. Ideally, we probably want another red source here. Just make sure we're diversifying. Just could come in, tap, and gain a life. That's okay. Five mana. Uh, let's see. Wherever an aura or um, equipment comes in is when we make the token. I like the idea of Enchantress's presence just to get another uh, thing on Sigurd. And then, uh, or I guess we fable, right? Get what counter there, put a counter on Restoration so that way we make sure we get the number, right? The biggest number of counters off of Chishiro at the end of turn. That creates that Shaman token. I guess I would just use, well, 
yeah, I'll use the man in the nature's Laura just to get it out of the way, make sure that we're um, keeping up on our lands, right? That we've got lots. We'll do the lush portico. I think I'll just dome the thicket. I think we're good on here. Go to combat, you know, Sigurd attacks. Um, good attack in here at a six, seven, eight, nine, nine, you know, good attack. And then on end step, Right, Chishiro puts a counter on every, everything that already has a counter or is already modified. So great, right? We're in a good spot. We're building and building. And I think from this point, you know, you can kind of see what we're trying to do, right? Um, get the sagas down, get the counters down, pay off the counters. Let me know. What do you think of Sigurd down in the comment section below? This one really caught me off guard. I really enjoy this deck. Um, in fact, if I probably had to pick sagas, it might be the way I'd be the most interested in doing it. I did really like Narsi from Commander Masters, that Abzan one, but I think I like Sigurd a lot better because you get those plus one, plus one synergies, and it makes me feel like I can use something like Chishiro, a commander that I always really liked but never was able to find a spot for, and make it do something good. So let me know what you think of Sigurd down in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys next.